All right, here's an explanation for the feasible region for this number five. Uh, what I like to do is instead of numbering or labeling the points, I'm going to label these lines A, B, C. It's going to be pretty busy going on, so it's good to refer back to them with those numbers. And let's start with uh, line A. Y is less than or equal to 2 thirds X plus 3. Step one is you just graph the line Y equals 2 thirds X plus 3. And this should become uh, be getting pretty automatic for you. You find the Y intercept, that's 0 comma 3. Then the slope is 2 thirds. That is rise over run or 3 over 2 up. 3 over 2 up. You only need two points, but it's good to get that pattern going. And then you draw in your line, but it's going to be an inequality. It is a less than or equal to, so it is a solid line that works. Okay, I make arrows on there to extend the line. It goes on forever. And now to decide what part of the shading it is, I use the test point zero, 00 to see if that point satisfies this inequality, then all the other points do, and I can, uh, I can shade that side. If, um, if it doesn't, I shade the opposite side. The, you use the test point zero, zero, because it's the easiest to calculate. I put in a zero for X and a zero for Y. That means is zero less than or equal to three. Uh, that is true. It is Correct. So I'm going to just add arrows right here to share to show me that indicate that it's below that line. All right, line uh, B. Y is I'm going to change color here. Y is greater than x minus four. Same style here. We've got a, a y intercept of negative four and a slope of one. One over one up. So it's rising. One over, one up, one over, one up, one over, one up. And that is going to be, let's see, I'll draw it in here. Snap that in. Here is that line. Uh, that's line B. I forgot to label line A. I'm going to go back and label line A. Sorry, inequality A and inequality B. Okay, so to test now to see what side to shade for y is greater than x minus 4, I'm going to use the test point 0, 0 again. And I'm going to double check, is 0 greater than 0 minus 4, negative 4? It is. So that means I'm shading on the side where 0, 0 is. Looks like those two uh, lines are facing. Oh, you know what I did? I forgot to uh, graph a dash line. I can't do that with notability, so I'm going to make it dashed. Because it's a strict greater than, points on that line are not officially included. Okay, so I got those. Uh, right now we're kind of facing in. So the feasible region right now, I'm just thinking out about it, is in this little channel here. The second, or sorry, third line, let's make that green. Negative five is less than X, which is less than five. This is a, it's kind of tough to, re, to remember this. They aren't lines like in Y equals MX plus B form. It's really two different inequalities. Negative five is less than X, and at the same time, X is less than five. So to think about this, I, I usually say, when in doubt, write it out. What does this line look like? Make an XY table and st first graph the line uh, X equals negative five. So negative five is always the X coordinate. So I can put in points like negative five, one, negative five, negative four, negative five, 10, negative five, three. And it doesn't take long to see that, that those points are going to be in a vertical line. Anytime you have the equation x equals something, it's going to be a vertical line. And so when x is greater than negative 5, 
I'm first going to graph the line x is equal to negative 5. I'm going to keep it dashed. And then the x coordinates have to be greater. That means it's going to be greater means going to the right. So I've got to face in this way. Something similar with the line, the inequality x is less than 5. That will be, have points that are at 5 comma 3, 5 comma 0, 5 comma negative 8. That is also a vertical line. And since the inequality is x is less than 5, they're going to be facing in this way. Another little channel. So now that I look at all those arrows on A, B, and lines C, I can kind of piece together what that feasible region is. The feasible region is the one that works for all points and all inequalities. It looks to be something like this. Looks like a trapezoid, I think. So we're not done yet. The hard part, some hard parts still exist and they are identifying the points of intersection there also known as the vertex points. In this case, there are four where things start to turn. And so I'll, I'll talk you through like how to think about this. Let's start with, um, well, the nice thing about this one is these, the green lines, line C, we know for sure that the coordinates of the, these on here on the right, it's five comma something. I know that for sure because this is the line x equals 5. So the x coordinate is 5. It's locked in. You don't even have to use uh, substitution or elimination for that until. So you use, let's see, this point right here. I'll go with this bottom right one. It is intersecting the green and the red. So that's line B. I'm going to clean this up and just now put in, if I use that, uh, y equals five minus four. So y should be equal to one. Because I don't need to really worry about the inequality now because I'm not worried about shading. I just want to identify where those points happen. Five comma one. If it, is, it looks super clear, you can probably label it, but I double check to see that what you see is what you get. Five comma one. All right, let's go up to this one where the blue line meets the green right here. That is blue, that's line A. I'm gonna put uh, that work, let me clean things up a bit. Math is messy, that's all right. I'm using the point or the line Y equals two thirds X plus three, and I'm putting it in a five. Y equals two thirds times five plus three, that is, 10 thirds plus 3, also known as 10 thirds plus 3 is also uh, 9 over 3. That's 19 thirds. 19 thirds is what? That's uh, 6 and 1 third. Does it look like that is the point 6 and 1 third? Actually, it's, uh, it's not too bad. It's a uh, this point is past the vertical line of six. Uh, I think I'm pretty good there. Like, always good to double check. All right, similarly, let's go over to the left. These points here, uh, you know for sure that the x coordinate of them is negative five. That's helpful. Not always will you have that, but you know for sure that because of that vertical line and x this one right here, x, the x coordinates are negative five. So let's go with that, the blue line, A. Uh, I'm gonna clean that up and uh, let's put in a negative five now. Oh, you know, I could have just almost changed everything x from five to negative five. All right, that's okay. So if y is equal to 2 thirds x plus 3, and I put in now a negative 5, that means I'm looking at y is equal to negative 10 thirds plus 3. 
n3 is also known as 9 thirds, common denominators, negative 10 thirds plus 9 thirds, negative 1 third. It looks like it's negative 1. It is negative 1 third. You can pause it to double check that my math is correct and that the, the point f negative 5, negative 1 third works and satisfies that equation. Okay. If it doesn't, I'm making this video all over again. Oh, goodness. All right. Uh, down to the last point, this bottom left one. It is negative 5 and it intersects with line B. So that's whoop, y is equal to x minus 4. If I put in a negative 5, y is equal to negative 5 minus 4. y is equal to negative 9. I look to be extending a little bit. It should be negative 9. A good lesson here is that the algebra will not lead you astray. Your eyes will sometimes deceive you, and the, the accuracy of your graph will not show you exactly what the point is. You're going to have to use your tools of, of logic and substitution and or elimination to get it right. All right, thanks for watching.